Okay, as promised, this is part two of the video. We're gonna make a 100 liter batch of biodiesel from start to finish. If you didn't catch the first video I did in this series, where I'm telling you five reasons to not do this, five reasons not to make biodiesel, check it out now. I'll, uh, I'll put a card up. I'm not recommending that anybody makes biodiesel. There's lots of reasons why not to do it. Uh, this is a demonstration, so let's work together and make, uh, make a full batch. Just for scientific purposes, of course. Okay, so we start with, uh, there's some used canola oil here. Uh, and I do 100 liter batches. So, my, okay, so my hot water tank here, uh, I've, I've marked out the, uh, the volume uh, measurements here. So here's 50 liters. And you can see I've already loaded 50 liters into the, into the processor. Uh, you can see the, the oil level right about there. We need to put another 50 liters in to get up to that 100 liter mark, which is right here. In the water heater, I only run the bottom element. And I'm running a 240 volt element in there, but only running it at 120 volts. So it takes a long time to warm up, but it's, it's just kind of a slow warm. It, uh, it doesn't start boiling the oil or anything like that. It just sort of gradually heats it up over three or four hours. Okay, so the first step in the process is to take our used oil and we pour it into this center tank here, which is, and I'll just grab the camera real quick to show you, which is where we put the waste oil in. Right, and I've got a screen there. You see, just a, just a screen to filter out the big chunks. Now the screen in that tank is just there to filter out the big chunks. You don't need to filter, pre-filter the oil too much. All you really need to do is get any, any big pieces caught in that screen. So that's the first step in the process is to dump the uh, used oil through the screen into our holding tank. And I've got this marked at 50 liters as well. So I fill it up to 50 liters, use the pump to pump it into the, tank, the hot water heater and then fill it up again to 50 liters and do it again. And that gives me my 100 liters of vegetable oil that I like to make 100 liter batches with. Okay, so just a matter of pouring this in, it just goes through the screen. This oil is very clean. Somebody looks like they maybe just used it once to cook a turkey or something. I got this from a friend. I think it was Thanksgiving turkey. Okay, and we'll just keep doing that. I got a bunch of jugs here keep doing that till we get up to the 50 mark and then we'll load it into the processor okay we've run into a bit of a glitch here um, I'm out of oil everything's empty and I didn't get up to my 50 liter mark so going back to one of the reasons why it's difficult to do this and why, why you might not want to do it I talked about in the first video, it's difficult to get oil sometimes. I'm out of oil and I don't have any scheduled pickups to get more oil. So uh, that looks like about 10 liters short. So this is 40 liters. There's 50 in here already. Let's just do a 90 liter batch. You can make any size batch you want as long as you're above the, uh, the heating element in the hot water, in the, in the water heater. Um, so we can do a 90 liter batch. It's okay. Uh, I'll just reduce the other chemicals uh, proportionally, so I'll just do 10% less of everything. So let's do a let's do a 90 liter batch for this uh, particular run. So the step here now is uh, is I've got a valve here at the bottom of this uh, this barrel. This is an up. This is a actually a 65 liter uh, drum that has the the threaded bungs on the bottom, and I've sealed the one up with silicone and tightened it really tight, and I've put just standard ball valve. Uh, three quarter inch threaded ball valves into into that bung there and they seal up really nice with a little bit of silicone on the threads um, so what I can do now is open up the bottom here to let the oil free and then uh, there's a pipe that comes through this motor and you can see it just with gravity it's pushing up a little bit it's pushing up okay through here uh, sorry through the bottom through the input of the motor down here let me see if I can show you with this camera so what happens now with that bung, with, the, uh, with this valve open, the oil's free to flow into a pipe and then into uh, that motor there. And then uh, on the outside of the motor, it'll come on the outlet of the motor, it'll come up this tube and load into the hot water tank at the top, okay? So what we can do now is make sure that we have uh, this valve closed because that's for later. That's when we send the finished fuel over to the finishing tank. Right now we want everything closed except for this and this, and then we can turn our pump on. And I've just wired a standard house switch to control that pump. 
So let's do that now. Let's turn this on. You see, now, that oil is flowing up into the, into the tank. And you can see our oil level in our tank here is slowly dropping as that oil gets pumped into the, to the, to the tank, to the water heater. Just about done. Now well, I can hear it's sucking air now. So we're empty, so we can shut the valve off at the bottom there. Okay. And uh, now what's happening is the pump's still running. So the pump is still running. And what's happening is the oil's. going up this tube into the heater and then it's coming out at the bottom. It's coming out here and then just going back into the pump and it's just doing a big loop right now. Just doing a big circular loop. So we can shut the shut the motor off for now. Later when we mix the chemicals in that's how we mix them up. Okay so we'll shut that off and you should see through this, uh, effectively with is a sight glass, we should see our level stop dropping there around this, this 100 liter mark that I made with a Sharpie here. And you can see it stopping there. So that's, that's how much oil's in the, in the processor right now. And as I mentioned, top elements disconnected bottom element is the one we use and I've just got the power going into the heater run through a just a simple switch here so it comes comes out of the wall into here so I can I can easily control the control the hot water heater on and off and see whether it's on or off so we'll turn it on now and start sending power to that element Again, 120 volts, running a 240 volt element down here. And that'll take a couple hours now. We're gonna let this sit for a couple hours and heat the oil. And we're, we're going for about 140 degrees Fahrenheit total. So 130, 135 is what you need for the reaction. And we've got this thermometer here that measures the outlet uh, of, the water, of the water tank. So once we've got the oil heated, We'll turn the pump back on and get things circulating past this, this uh, thermometer here. And we'll want to see about 140. We need 135, but I like to go a little bit more. I like to go 140 because when you're adding the, the methanol and, and, and everything in, you have the element off, of course. And uh, while you're doing that uh, and waiting, your oil temperature starts to drop. So I like to go a little bit on the high side. Now, methanol boils at... I think just over 150 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can't go too high or you'll boil the methanol when you put it in. So I found the sweet spots around 140 Fahrenheit. Okay, so now really it's just a bunch of waiting. Um, we'll let it, uh, let it heat and we'll come back once we're up to 140 degrees and do the next step. Okay, it's been a couple hours. Let's have a look. Now I haven't run the pump yet, so let's, uh, let's run the pump. The element's still on and we'll get this oil circulating through the system and see what the temperature is up to now. <laughs> You can feel the heat there. It's warm. It's coming up. Again, we're aiming for about 140. And that's where I have the thermostat set so that it'll kick out when it gets that hot. It's been, well, it's probably been at least three hours, so it should be enough to get it there. 
but as I mentioned, this is a 240 volt element running at 120, so it takes a while. It looks like we're pretty much there. We'll let it continue to heat while we mix up the uh, methanol potassium hydroxide mix, the catalyst. Okay, now that we've got the oil heated up to about 140 degrees Fahrenheit, it's time to start working on the catalyst. So uh, remember we're making a 90% batch, so I use 20% methanol to oil volume. So if we have 90 liters of oil, we need 18 liters of methanol. So that's exactly what I've got in this container here. And then, in terms of catalyst, we're gonna use 90% of this bag. I've, I've measured this is the right amount, and I won't get into all the math of, uh, of how much catalyst to put in. It's, it's roughly a, a kilogram, or 2.2 2 pounds, roughly. So we're gonna use about 10% less for this patch. Okay, so this stuff does produce a bit of gas. You don't want to breathe it in. You should use a ventilator, blah, 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 but you shouldn't be doing this to begin with, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. I got a funnel here to get the catalyst into the methanol. So we'll just pour it all in, less 10%. cap on. This is a cap with a valve in it. And we're just going to make sure it's tight and closed. We're just going to rock it back and forth to mix up that catalyst with the methanol. It, is, it dissolves pretty quickly. Uh, it does produce a little bit of heat and a little bit of pressure but not much. So I, sometimes I let the pressure out like that. But we'll just let that sit for 15-20 minutes and completely dissolve. Okay, now we're ready to introduce the catalyst, which is all mixed up into the process. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that we have this element off. We don't want the element on when we're introducing catalyst, methanol. So that element has to be off. We don't want it producing any heat. We're up to 140 degrees here on the temperature um, readout. So that's good, that's where we want to be. So what I've got is I built a little table here. Oh, before we go any further, I'll just show you an example here. I knocked this valve and spilled a bunch of oil all over the place. So back to my other video, which uh, you've seen. One of my points of why you shouldn't do this is because you'll make a mess. You see how easy it is. You can make a big bloody mess doing this work. Anyway, got some floor dry on there, it's fine. I always use a piece of cardboard in front as well to help absorb things. Okay, let's go into introducing the catalyst. Again, make sure that's off. And I built a little table here to set this on so I don't have to hold it because it's heavy, right? That here. So into this hose, we're gonna introduce the catalyst into the pump. It's gonna go up and down back out here, we'll introduce all that catalyst and then we'll just mix. We just run the pump and mix the biodiesel and the catalyst all together for about an hour. Okay, let's get started. Um, so we'll open this valve a little bit so we can get some air in. And uh, we'll open this valve to get things flowing. And then this one, and then we'll get the pump on. Again, double check. Elements off. 
pump is on. So now we have catalyst flowing into our system. And you can see that colors changed here. So there's a mix of the biodiesel and the methanol in, in the tube here, uh, which is obviously a different color than just the pure oil. Sorry, a mix of oil and catalyst. It's not biodiesel yet, but it's starting to become biodiesel. Back this valve off a little bit. That'll slow the flow out of the machine, which will create a bit more of a vacuum here, which will allow us to drain the catalyst tank out a little bit quicker. All right, we're just about there. See, this little hose here gives me a little bit of flexibility. I can move things around with it. I find this is a pretty good way to do it. There's really no splashing. You know, I keep this air, air vent loose but on there. Um, but you know, there's, it's really kind of a sealed system, so you know, there's nothing that's going to splash back up in your face or anything. I'm going to close this valve off and we can remove this guy and get it out of the way. Now you can see we're starting to mix. So I can pull this one right open now. Make sure all the valves are open. Everything else is closed. And now it's just a matter of mixing. And up here, splashing down into the tank. And you know, I usually do it for about an hour. An hour, I think, is, is probably pretty good. Um, it might not even need an hour. But my feeling is if it mixes for an hour, it's gone. Every liter in there has gone through the loop a bunch of times. It tends to be pretty well mixed. OK, so we'll let that go for an hour, and then we'll talk about the next steps. The next steps are really just going to be to shut the pump off and let it sit overnight, but we'll talk about that in a minute. And just one more quick note as we mix, our temperature is, like I said, just a little bit below 140, maybe 135, which is just perfect. We need it to be above 130, and for the hour or so that it mixes, it will be. It sits between 130 and, well, 135 and 137 or so, so that's perfect. So we'll let it continue to mix. Let it do the loop a bunch of times. And then we'll shut it down and we'll let it sit. So at that point, once it's mixed, we wanna just let it sit in the tank, at least overnight. Sometimes I let it sit for two or three days, but I wanted to get this video out to you guys. So I'm gonna let it sit overnight. And what will happen is the glycerin will start to separate from the biodiesel. You can see here in this little tank, I don't know how well that shows, but the that's mostly glycerin with a little bit of biodiesel on top. I don't know if that's coming through very well. Is that any better? Yeah. So you can see the glycerin settles to the bottom and the more clear liquid at the top is the biodiesel. So that's what's going to be happening as uh, we let the let this sit after it's mixed up is the glycerin is going to settle to the bottom be about 20 liters of glycerin and then the biodiesel's on top but we'll get to that later when we start um, dealing with the finished biodiesel and draining off the glycerin and so forth so that's coming up next okay so it's all mixed up for about an hour. Uh, you can see our levels about there right now, certainly above the 100 liter mark because we put 90 liters of biodiesel plus about 18 liters of catalyst in. So we're at, what, 110 liters, something like that. 
at that level. Now we'll let it cool down, we'll let it sit overnight. What's happening in there now is the reaction's occurring and the glycerin uh, will be dropping out of the biodiesel and we're gonna end up with about 20 liters of glycerin in the bottom which will drain off in the next step. And then we'll have biodiesel which we can take to the next step of pumping it over and starting to wash it and get it ready for use. So we'll let it sit, we'll let it cool, we'll let it react and we'll wait till tomorrow. Okay, welcome back. It's the next day. The biodiesel's been sitting overnight. And so what we should have now is we should have a lot of glycerin settled out of the, out of the vegetable oil, leaving the biodiesel on top. So we'll find a jug. And what we do here, let me just adjust the camera angle here for you. Now this is the, the low part of the system. So what we can do is, is uh, have our, our valve open out of the bottom of the tank and then open this valve. And what that will do is it will drain from the bottom of the hot water tank, which should be full of glycerin right now. And we'll just drain it into this empty jug or mostly empty jug. Pull this out of here. So we should see that nice black glycerin if we had a reaction and the biodiesel fell out. So let's see what this looks like. Yeah, look at that. So that's the dark glycerin off the bottom of the oil. Oh, there's more mess. And we should end up getting well, we put 18 liters of the uh, catalyst in, so we should get up, get about 18 liters of glycerin off the bottom uh, if we had a perfect reaction. You never get a perfect reaction, but I'm hoping for at least 15 or 16 liters of uh, glycerin off the bottom, which will mean a mostly complete reaction, which, uh, which will mean we have a uh, nice biodiesel to work with. So we'll continue to drain this until it starts to run clear more clear, more like yellow, which means that we've hit the biodiesel layer. Okay, you can see we've just about got probably just about 16 or 17 liters off, I think, and it's starting to turn to biodiesel. You see the biodiesel thinner, so it's starting to shoot out and it's starting to get clear. So before I make a mess, I'm gonna shut this off He's starting to run clear. Okay, we've got all the glycerin, or 99% of it, drained out of the water tank, leaving just uh, basically back to about our 90 liters of, of, of biodiesel um, with the glycerin stripped out. So, the next step is to transfer the raw biodiesel across this way into the finishing tank right here. So the same pump that was used to circulate is used to transfer the biodiesel from here to here. So um, basically all we need to do is make sure we, we close off the valve. That's the valve that would allow it to continue to circulate there. And there's a T here with a valve that will open the flow up to go across the bottom here, the pump, and across that way. Okay, here we go. <laughs> now I'll just grab the camera here. And I'll show you what this looks like. Up here. Yeah. Try not to drop the camera. There's the biodiesel coming into the bottom. Water tank. Across and up.
Okay, we've pumped the entire contents of the water tank into our finishing tank. You can see it's done here. So we'll quickly shut the pump off and close this off so it doesn't start running back. Okay, so that's closed. This could be open now. And we have our roughly 90 liters plus whatever was in there before of biodiesel in here now. Okay, let's, let's talk a little bit about this pump. <coughs> hey, let's talk a little bit about this now. There's two outlets here. Uh, there's two threaded bungs on the bottom of these, of these uh, plastic barrels. It's an upside down barrel that I've cut the top out of. This is uh, threaded right into the bottom, so you can take um, the, any contaminants that continue to fall out of the biodiesel off the bottom. So usually I let it sit in here for a day or two. A little bit more glycerin will come off, and then after we do the washing, we take the, any soap or any other contaminants that fall out, out of this tube here. This one over here is on a six inch sandpipe, so it's coming from about there. Um, and that's where the finished fuel goes out when we're done. So we do a sandpipe because any gunk tends to settle toward the bottom. So we're taking uh, the biodiesel off six inches up. So you're always getting a little bit cleaner fuel when you're dealing with your finished fuel. So we'll get into all that in a few minutes. Um, <coughs> but the first thing we can do is just make sure nothing has fallen out. Usually you let this sit overnight. And when it starts running clear out of here, which it is um, right now because we just transferred it, then we're ready to go on to the washing step. Now, for washing, <coughs> we'll just get right into that. Okay, coming over to the right side of the machine here, uh, I've got this air pump right here. This is a hot tub air pump. So these pumps are fairly inexpensive. They're about a hundred bucks, I think. And they flow a lot of air and they're designed to run for a long time, right? Like in a spa, in a hot tub, in a jacuzzi type thing. Uh, so it's just a 120 volt air pump that comes out of here. I've got a little adapter, piece, uh, PCV adapter that then brings the air up, this PCV. Up the PCV tube and then down into the bottom of the tank. And at the bottom of the tank, I've got a, 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 a X splitter that uh, we've put PCV in. So we've got a, a PCV X in the bottom of the tank with a bunch of holes drilled in it so that the air can come out from the bottom of the tank and bubble up and evaporate all the old, uh, any trace methanol or, or water that might be in there. Um, and what that'll do is, is once the methanol is gone, any soaps or other contaminants uh, have less tendency to hang on to the biodiesel. I don't know the chemistry of it, I don't, but apparently the, once you remove the methanol, any contaminants will not hang on to the biodiesel particles or molecules or whatever, and they'll fall out with gravity to the bottom of the biodiesel, which, you, which we can then drain off of our, our, low, our low part of the tank there. So that's what's going on right now. Next, uh, we will turn on our hot tub air pump. Uh, this is an air bleed right here. If there's too much pressure, you can just bleed some of the pressure off here. I usually just go full pressure um, and, uh, and run air through the biodiesel for maybe two hours to make sure uh, everything's evaporated out. This is to be done in uh, ventilated conditions with the garage door open because there could be some methanol fumes in the air and so forth. Uh, we don't want to you know, breathe that in or create a fire hazard, so I, uh, I, you do that in an outside type environment only. But you don't do this at all, so don't worry about it. You don't, you're not going to do this because you should not make biodiesel. See my previous video. Okay, so let's get this going. Uh, oh, first, here, hang on. Let's look at the T, see if we can see the T. Right up here, this precarious... Oh shit, no, you can't see it. It's too, uh, it's too cloudy. We should have looked at it before. Anyway, imagine at the bottom there, there's a T, or a, really an X, a four-way splitter, with uh, 10 inches of PCV on each end with a bunch of holes drilled in them, bubbling up the, bubbling up the uh, 
the air through the biodiesel from the bottom here. It's sitting on the bottom and then it just bubbles, bubbles, bubbles. So let's check this out. <coughs> uh, I just got this on a plug over here. So these pumps aren't very noisy either, which is really nice. I put a, a old bed sheet over this sometimes because there is a little bit of oil mist that will come out with that violent, uh, violent shaking, uh, violent uh, bubbling, and it can get a little bit on uh, like a car or on the garage floor. You'll notice a little bit of a film sometimes, not much, but this acts almost like a filter. The air can still come through, but the uh, any oil particles will kind of get absorbed into the fabric over the course of about a year or so. It's gets oily and then we have to throw it away. Now finally, once the about two hours of bubbling has occurred, we let it sit for a day or two and then take any contaminants off the bottom. You'll see some <coughs> some soaps and maybe some cloudy diesel, maybe a little bit of glycerin falling out the bottom. And once that's done, then we're ready for the finished product. We're done, we're done making our biodiesel. So I've got a, a biodiesel safe farm tank hose here and just a farm filler thing. Uh, now the biodiesel comes out of the standpipe, which is six inches up here, comes into this pump, which I've got on the switch here, and uh, is pumped up through the this farm filter here, it's a 10 micron farm filter to just remove any last minute contaminants. If any solids happen to make their way through the process or whatever, goes through a uh, farm filter and then into our green hose here and into your car or into a jerry can. So that's how we make biodiesel with this process. Um, <coughs> you can use the pump to pump it or you can gravity feed it. When there's lots of diesel here, there's some gravity pressure. So usually I do that. So if we just, let's just open this up and our valve here of course and we can see the finished product so here's our finished product finished biodiesel which you shouldn't use for the reasons discussed before and you shouldn't make it anyway thanks for watching this video guys So thanks for watching this video guys. About